Hi guys, it's me, Professor D, and welcome back to my YouTube channel. On this video, I'm going to be covering iron and folic acid deficiency anemia. If you haven't done so already, guys, please don't forget to like this video, subscribe to this channel, press that red notification button. So as soon as a new video is released, you'll be notified. So guys, without any further ado, let's get started. So we're going to start with anemia in general. Take a look. So, <clears throat> excuse me. The normal hematocrit range in non-pregnant women is 37 to 47%. Why is that important for us to know? When we're looking to see if a patient is potentially anemic, we're looking at that H and H. And if you have a choice, you have to only choose one, it's gonna be the hemoglobin because remember that hemoglobin it is what carries that oxygen. But you're looking at both the H and H, that's what will tell you if that patient is anemic. Okay, so your normal is 37 to 47%. By the way, guys, when I'm doing these lessons, I'm going over things, I just don't have enough time to cover everything. So that's why I'm not going over this line by line, but it doesn't mean what I don't cover, it's not important. It's just, I'm pulling out the most important things to give to you, okay? Uh, moving on, anemia in pregnancy is defined as a hemoglobin, less than 11 in the first and third trimesters and less than 10.5 in the second trimester. Now, something you guys have to understand, um, when a woman gets pregnant, what you're gonna see, you see how they tell you um, in that second trimester, 10.5, there's a huge fluid shift, okay? A huge influx of fluid. And so we expect um, that uh, hemoglobin to decrease slightly because we're, it's gonna, it's dilution, okay? It's going to be diluted. We expect it to drop slightly, but if it drops more than 10.5, you're going to suspect anemia. They'll be diagnosed as it. So you need to know that a hemoglobin less than six to eight is considered severe anemia. And this is the anemia that the patient most likely is going to have to get blood transfusions. So again, guys, less than 11 in the first and third and 10.5 or less in the second trimester, very important. Once they hit eight or less, it's severe anemia. And we're expecting them to probably get some blood. The majority of cases in anemia and pregnancy are, ca are caused by iron deficiency. And this is something that um, most often can be prevented through what? The prenatal vitamins that are full of iron. So let's get into iron deficiency anemia. Let me make this a little bit larger for you guys to see. <sighs> Sorry, guys, I've got a bad cold. Okay. Iron deficiency anemia is by far the most common of anemia in pregnancy. This is the second time we're seeing that, guys, accounting for about 75% of the cases. It's diagnosed by checking the woman's serum ferritin level. So let's stop here. We know that if we want to see if a woman, if someone is anemic, we're going to be looking at their H and H, especially the hemoglobin. Great. But if we want to see what type of anemia they have, like we want to see if it's actually iron deficiency anemia versus something else. When we suspect it's iron, what are we looking at? The ferritin levels. So yes, that H and H, the hemoglobin is going to tell us if that patient's anemic, but to take it a step further, it's the ferritin level that's going to let us know if they have iron deficiency anemia. anemia okay. Ferritin level reflects the iron reserves. Hence why we're looking at that ferritin to see if the type of anemia the patient has is iron deficiency. Serum ferritin levels below, look at this, 12 micrograms per liter. That 12, that's your magic number. Once that ferritin is lower than 12, we're going to suspect iron deficiency anemia along with the low hemoglobin levels. That lets you know that we're dealing with iron deficiency anemia. So again, that hemoglobin, the low hemoglobin will tell us if that, if that patient's anemic but that low hemoglobin along with the low ferritin lets us know that's what type of anemia? Iron deficiency anemia. Generally, iron deficiency anemia is preventable. I told you this already. It's preventable or easily treated with iron supplements, those prenatal vitamins that mom's supposed to be taking. And by the way, um, 
if you get test question about a woman of childbearing age that's not pregnant, but she wants to be pregnant, one of the things you need to teach her is to start taking prenatal vitamins because we always want them preferably taking those vitamins before they even get pregnant, right? Pregnant women are often encouraged to take prophylactic iron supplementation. Most women with iron deficiency anemia can absorb as much as, excuse me, as much iron as they need by taking one 325 milligram tablet of ferrous sulfate. That's your iron, guys. So they're going to take 325 milligrams of ferrous sulfate twice a day. That's important to know. I wish I had a highlighter. I need to replenish my office. I move stuff around so much. But that is very important for you guys to know. 325 milligrams ferrous sulfate, that's the iron twice a day. Women who are severely anemic may require blood transfusions. The nurse teaches importance of iron supplementation for preventing or treating iron deficiency anemia. They said this to us already. We saw that like a paragraph or two ago. And now the author's repeating themselves. Why are they repeating themselves? Because it's important for you to know you're most likely going to see that on test. Don't say I didn't warn you. In addition, the nurse teaches about increasing dietary intake of iron rich foods and how to decrease the GI side effects of iron therapy because iron is very hard on the stomach. Very hard on the stomach. So let's take a look. I'm going to jump to page 222. Oh, I know some of you guys are going to ask what book am I teaching out of? So this is what it looks like. Okay. This is a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful box that goes over sources of iron. And guys, these sources that they question you on, it's important to know, you're going to see that on your HESI maternity, ATI maternity, NCLEX, you got to know it. So let's take a look. I'm not going to go over all of them, guys. Okay, a diet rich in vitamin C. Why? Guess what? You need that ascorbic acid in order to absorb the iron. If you're taking iron, but you don't have that vitamin C to absorb the iron, what's the point? So yes, you need that um, iron, but you also need that vitamin C. So a rich diet in vitamin C, which includes citrus fruits, tomatoes, melons, and strawberries, bran, tea, coffee, milk, milk oxalates, and spinach, Swiss, I can't speak guys, Swiss chard and egg yolk decrease in absorption. I needed to put a sad face next to this. Let me put a happy face next to the vitamin C. So the vitamin C, wonderful. That's what helps you absorb the iron. But bran, tea, coffee, milk, oxalates, which are found in spinach and Swiss charge, and egg yolk decrease iron absorption. We don't want that. That's why I put a sad face avoid consuming them at the same time as iron supplement. Iron's best absorbed is taken when the stomach is empty. We don't want that iron competing for absorption. Okay. So it's better to take it on an empty stomach with a full glass of water. If you're taking that iron, you're going to teach mama, she's taking the iron liquid to drink, uh, take it through a straw. So she doesn't stain her teeth. Iron's very constipating. So you have to teach mom to drink lots of fluid. And when I say fluid, I mean water, not juice. Okay. Lots of fluids and lots of fiber because iron is very constipating. It can be very constipating. You're going to teach her that, um, Iron will turn her stools a very dark color so she doesn't freak out when she has a bowel movement, okay? If an iron dose is missed, take it as soon as remembered. The iron may cause stools to be black or dark green. Teach mom that in advance. Constipation is common with iron supplementation. A diet high in fiber with adequate fluid intake is recommended. And when I say fluid intake, I'm talking about what? H2O, water. Very important to know. Oh, I didn't look to see what page I was on when I was teaching you guys about iron. What chapter was I in? Was it chapter 11?
Oh, there we go. Okay. Okay, guys, so that is your iron deficiency anemia in a nutshell. Now let's do folic acid deficiency anemia. Folate, this is a water-soluble vitamin that's found naturally in dark green leafy veggies, citrus fruits, eggs, legumes, and whole grains. Guess what? That is a beautiful select all that applies that I've seen on ATI, HESI, and NCLEX. You need to know those sources of folate. They're given to you right here. Poor diet, cooking with large volumes of water, and increased alcohol use can contribute to folate deficiency, not having enough of that vitamin. The recommended daily intake of folic acid for non-pregnant women is 40, uh, excuse me, 400 micrograms. Pregnant women need 50% more or 600 micrograms per day. Both the prescription and non-prescription prenatal vitamins contain more than the recommended daily intake of folic acid and should be sufficient to prevent and treat folic acid deficiency. So those supplements will be more than enough. Folate deficiency, look at this guys, is the most common cause of megaloblastic anemia during pregnancy, but a vitamin B12 deficiency must also be considered. Other women at risk for developing vitamin B12 deficiency. By the way, guys, that vitamin B12 deficiency can cause severe neurological damage to the fetus, okay? And to the patient as well, if she has a, a vitamin B12 deficiency. But anyway, other women at risk for developing vitamin B12 deficiency are those with GI, um, gastrointestinal disease, such as Crohn's disease, or who take medication metformin. You guys know metformin, that's that oral hypoglycemic. And last thing, a folate deficiency usually improves rapidly with folic acid therapy. And the reason for that is with those supplements, you get more than what you really need. You get more than enough. And so if the patient um, has that folic acid deficiency in no time of her taking those vitamins, she'll be fine. Um, that deficiency will be resolved. Okay, guys, that is your um, iron deficiency anemia and your folic acid deficiency anemia in a nutshell. There is so much in maternity and peds that I'm so excited to cover um, with you guys. If there's anything that you'd like to see me cover because I'm making an ever-growing list, please go ahead, sound off in the comments. And it doesn't have to be a specialty. It could be med search as well. I'm going to try to uh, produce as many of these videos for you guys as possible. Please don't forget, guys, support me. I'm doing this for you guys. The least you can do, please support me. Like this video. Comment on this video. I need some engagement going. Share my video on your social media platform. Maybe somebody is in the nursing program or is thinking about the nursing program, and this might help. Guys, thank you so much for watching this video, and you'll see me on the next video.